Hello. We have such a special treat for you today. If you say Les Miserables or Miss Saigon are your most favorite shows, they can still be your favorite shows, but now you're going to meet your favorite people. Alain Boulil and uh, Claude um, Michel Schoenberg. Boubli. Boubli. That's right. All right. I learn, I learn, and uh, so they are the composer and lyricist of these two wonderful shows, among others. But they're here with us in Dallas to talk about the show that they have created and put together, and it is entitled, Do You Hear the People Sing? So, welcome to Dallas. Please sit down Thank and you. let's chat. Okay. Yes. Alan, I would like to know how you got started. I, what I see in my mind is that somebody put a piece of paper on your desk and said, make up a show. Not exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how did this happen? It started when uh, I Dreamed the Dream, the song from Le Miserable, became uh, one night, you know, another mm -hmm. night hit, uh -huh. when Susan Boyle came to sing it on television. Yes. We were as stunned as everyone else because we discovered the song when we were watching television. And you, overnight, you know, received two million telephone calls and, and all that. Two so, million? Of course. I'm, oh. I'm not exaggerating, never. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, so anyway, it started from there because uh, there is a, a friend of us who is also an agent uh, called Steve Linder in Los Angeles. No, you're talking about how we did Do You Hear People Sing, right? How do you, yeah, do you speak yes, about well, uh, the show? Yes, yes. You're talking Do You Hear People Sing or Les yeah. Rap? No, Do You Hear the People That's Sing? Okay. Yes. No, no, sorry. If well, I, you talk about if what I misunderstood you. No, okay. Yeah. So you will edit whatever you want. You so the, the story of Do You Hear People Sing is simple. After the success of Susan Boyle, which became, you know, so huge, and then yes. the record sold six million copies and all that. I received a call from someone called Steve Linder, IMG artist in Los Angeles, who said to me, is it in time that you think of having a show which would be about all the songs from your shows and make an evening, uh, which I bet you is going to be an interesting evening. I said, no, why, you know, and all that. It, we write shows, we don't write shows with excerpts of shows. So, at the end, he convinced us, and here we are trying to make it a different evening, mm -hmm. writing a narrative, telling a story about how we wrote the show, how we met, how things came about together, and then we thought, well, that's going to be probably a very nice evening. Let's invite all the people or some of the people as soloists who have already been in our shows. So it's not just people, it's a family of people here mm -hmm. who come to sing because they have been in Le Miserable, they have been in Messagon, they have been in Martinguer, they have been in the French Revolution, the first uh, show which gave birth to all the other shows, mm -hmm. you know, which has never been performed in this country so far. Really? But will, maybe will. soon. Oh. And, uh, and, and this evening is all about music, and lyrics, and also about our story and the story of the people mm -hmm. who have been part of the family that we have been have been playing our shows for the last 25 years in this country. Claude Michel, were you enthusiastic about this, or why are we doing this? What was your take? No, because of, of course I was enthusiastic about the project of a concert because I think we have achieved five or six different shows. And uh, you're always happy to have an evening about all the work that you have been doing because some shows are very famous, mm -hmm. so they are revival every day, everywhere in the world. And some of the show has not been as successful, but still with very good ma uh, score. Mm -hmm. So at least in an evening, you can show to the people the full uh, scale of what we have been writing and doing, mm -hmm. and they realize that. Even if Martin Gare is not as famous as Les Mis or Miss Saigon, they love one particular moment in Martin Gare, which is very, very beautiful. And uh, it's another adventure for us.
to try to put together a, an evening of concert of two hours with everything we have been doing. Because when you, we see a show, we know what it is. We know that beginning, uh, intermission, and the end. There, it's completely new, and it, it's very interesting for us. And awarding at the same time. Because at least the people, from an ego point of view, the people coming to see the show, they're not coming to see the show just for the show, but practically for us, because we have been writing so much music, and of course, for the wonderful people we have. Do the, does the audience want to hum and sing along? The, the it happens during the evening, yeah, yeah. and certainly at the finale. And they know practically all, all the songs. We of course. Because, you know, we are storytelling people. Yes. So even in an evening like that, at the end, what we have done is a kind of musical of our, all our musicals. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. That's what the evening is, is about. With this concert, what, what has been the biggest surprise to you as you've worked on it? As we work, well, first it, it's success because when he did it for the first time in Indianapolis a few months ago, uh, I mean, we had four sold out concerts and its success was amazing to us. Uh, that's why we accepted Steve Cook's proposition mm -hmm. to make it as an arena version here in Dallas. And uh, that's why we're here because this is the premiere of the arena version of Do You Hear People Sing? So, for us, it's very, very important. It's like the opening of a new show. And uh, coming here on the back of, I, we hear the amazing success that the Les Rap tour, 25th anniversary tour, I hear broke every record in Dallas, uh, yes. made it as it was meant to be here that we would do uh, this arena version uh, here. That's why we're here. And we, we really enjoy you know, seeing how this, this is going to develop and register with the Dallas audience. Les Miserables is such a triumphant show, I think, and uh, people people respond to to the story again and again. Um, what um, is that the most gratifying thing to you? Is is the audience response to to what you have created? You took something and created something new from it. Of course, because after uh, 26 years, after the creation, 27 years after the creation of the show in London, to realize that we still have upcoming production and that people are so enthusiastic about the show, it means that they are never fed up with what we have been doing. And uh, it, it's all over the world. So it's very interesting for us because uh, I must say, sometimes we meet people who have been watching the show 380 times. Really? And I don't really understand <laughs> it, but uh, they know the show even better than us. And that's very gratifying for us and, and very interesting. But the most gratifying part of it, and that's when you have a long running show, uh, as far as I am concerned, I'm sure it's the same as well, is that sometimes anywhere in the world we're watching a show that uh, kind of repertory show. And at the end of the show, you have uh, the lead uh, female coming to see you. She's a kind of 25, 26 uh, years old girl. And she comes to you and she says, you know, sir, I did, I'm did. i doing this job because of you. And you are always surprised. You say, yes, because when I was 13, mm -hmm. you say, my God, that was a long time ago. <laughs> I went to see the show with my mom. Mm -hmm. When I saw it on stage, I thought that's what I want to do in my life. So you realize that you are changing people's life. And for me, it's the most gratifying part of it. It's, it's beautiful to see that. And Rewarding, for, humbling. And for the moment, we are shooting in England the movie of Les Miserables. And uh, Annette Away told us the other day that her mom, she was in the first tour of the show. Mm -hmm. Uh, singing the ensemble, covering Fantine, and she told me, since I'm four, I know the show by heart. Oh. So that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. you, need, you need to have a, a, a separate section for the ones who want to sing along. <laughs> and, but they wouldn't need the lyrics, because I'm sure they know the lyrics uh, and the melodies by heart. Oh, they do. 
But we are continuing in the way, you know, what the novel mm -hmm. has been doing yes. since yes. it's been printed the first time around. I mean, it's nearly 200 years, I mean, it's more than 200 years ago now. <coughs> and, uh, you know, this novel has never gone out of fashion for one day. No. And it's still true and it's still relevant to the world in which we live. And uh, it's like we've been uh, go-betweens, you know, continuing the work that this novel has been doing and found the way how to, with music and lyrics, how to take it to another generation mm -hmm. and to uh, an even larger audience than uh, it had reached so far. And now with the movie, here we are back co-writing the screenplay. And uh, in fact, we're here just uh, on, on a leaf, on a week leave <laughs> from being on the movie uh, full time, which is what we do. Yeah. And I must tell you, it's like we had a lot of work to do for the rewriting of the movie together with uh, the director Tom Hooper and uh, the English lyricist uh, Herbert Kretzmer. And we are doing all this work rewriting a new song for the movie. We have three new scenes in the movie. and. The most difficult task is to try to make this movie as a film different from what a play is because it has to be different. Yes. It has to be a movie and at the same time that no one who loved the show would notice the changes and would think, oh, all this was in the show, isn't it true? And it wasn't, you know. So that's, that's the most difficult challenge with the writing of the movie, is not to disappoint mm -hmm. and at the same time to turn mm -hmm. it into what it has to be, a movie. But to come back to the original novel by Victor Hugo, it was a popular book during the Civil War in the, in the States. Yes. Among the soldiers. I'm not going to, because we are in Dallas, and I'm not going to tell you on which side of the soldier it was very popular, but it was a very popular book. I must say, the first time I saw the show, you sent me back to the book. I went back to look and, and to reread and right. how That's how what it does. Yes, yes, and and every time I've seen it since, uh, I there are enough uh, nuances in your writing that I I hear something new or see something new that I didn't see before. So it, the richness of for us audience members is uh, is is quite wonderful. After the movie's over. What what's perking? What are you going to do next after that? We're going to rest. No. <laughs> Can we all come and visit? <laughs> well, visit the cinemas. <laughs> <laughs> Any ideas though for the next show? Another show? Not for the Not yet. Not yet? No. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. What? We have a lot of things to digest. But you'll, but you'll let us know, right? Oh, when we will, of course. We, so we, yeah. we can do this. We, are, you know, we would like to know ourselves <laughs> as quickly <laughs> as possible. <laughs> if we get the money, we can try to open it in Dallas. Oh, all right. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll look into that. I'm so glad you're here in Dallas. And, and thank you so much for talking with us today. It's, uh, it's lovely to meet you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. You're welcome.